Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live Facebook YouTube feed. So come on in and join us. I am here with the amazing Lynn <laughs> Foolish. Hey, Lynn. Hi. Um, Lynn is actually one of our authors. She's one of our instructors on Creative Spark. That's what I'm really here always to talk about. And um, also, she actually happened to work for CNT Publishing for almost 20 years. Yep, almost yeah. 20 years. And you were an editor, correct? Yeah. Yes. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn was gone by the time I came along. So, <laughs> but I've gotten to know Lynn through um, Crave Spark, which has been great. Um, and some of you may recognize her. You probably, you might even know some of her books or books she's worked on. And she also teaches in a lot of amazing places. And we're going to talk some about that too today as well. So um, we're going to dive into like what Lynn's like kind of. I'm gonna say one of the things you're really known for, which is dyeing, correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. I yes. love dyeing fabric. Yeah, so she has two classes on Cream Spark, um, and I'm gonna put links to both of them in the chat. Uh, one of them is called Dynamic Dyeing. It's a Shibori color and pattern class, uh, and we'll go into details. And the other one that we're gonna start talking about is Fabric Dyeing and Color Mixing 101. So that one's a little more geared towards, I'd say like beginner or beginner intermediates, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. And will you give us like an overview of kind of like what, like that class focuses on a specific type of dye. You wanna go into what dyes you like and or what dye you're talking about in that one? Sure, the dyes that I use are called Procyon dyes or Procyon type dyes. And they're what's called fiber reactive. And what that means is that the dyes form a chemical bond with the fabric. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, what makes them really great is it makes the dyes very vibrant and very permanent and very washable. So that once you've dyed your fabric and washed it all out, um, you can use it like you would any other fabric. Or if you dye clothes, it's just like any, um, any fabric or clothing that you buy in the store. And so they're really easy to use. They're really easy to get and they just yield great results. And do you need to use them on certain fabrics or can you use them on any type of fabric or are there certain? They, they are, it's, it's very interesting. They're designed to work on plant-based fibers. Okay. So that means cotton, cotton linen, rayon, uh, ramy, hemp, bamboo, but they will also work on silk and wool if you use them a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So they're very versatile. Oh, that's awesome. So in this first class, um, Lynn's gonna kind of take you about how to, not only how to do the dyeing, but how to mix colors, blending, and almost like a little bit of like color, a little color theory, would you say? Yes. Yeah. We use the, uh, let me get the, uh, Oh, there, there, there we go. go. So <laughs> we, use, we use the dyes to actually create a color wheel and play with mixing complementary colors. So you really understand how colors work. And the color theory applies to anything, whether you do any painting or, or drawing, any medium, the basic color mixing principles apply. And what that allows is that there's just a huge range of colors you can buy, but it's just not practical to own every single color. Yeah. So when you know how to mix, you can buy a basic stock of colors and then mix what you have to create new colors that you want. And do you test out those colors on paper before you kind of like yep, exactly. the palette? Now, nope, exactly what I do is I'll mix them up and I'll paint a little bit on a piece of paper. And it's not it's not exactly what it will look like on fabric, but it tells me whether or not I'm in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so I tend to do a lot of a lot of mixing with what I've got. Um, the other thing that is kind of cool is that you have ideas always on what to dye. So there's like <laughs> a lot for like your own essentially fabrics for quilts. That's one mm -hmm. of the you're really known for. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions I had for you, um, and by the way, if anyone has questions for Lynn, please put it in the chat. We want to hear them, by the way. But one of the questions I had for her was, does she have like a quilt pattern or design or art quilt in mind when you choose the colors you're going to dye or do you just dye stuff and then you're like try to and then you are inspired by that some of each actually sometimes i'll have something in mind and i'll dye the fabric that i want for that specific quilt and i've got a large stash of fabric that i've dyed either because i'm playing around with stuff 
or uh, I just want to try things out. So sometimes I'll have a stack of fabric and go, oh, these would work really well together. So yeah. it's a little bit of both. Or I'll be halfway into a project and go, oh, you know, I really need a different shade of green so I can go and dye myself some green. Well, and that's actually what I was thinking is like when you get to that thing and you're like, I need this shade and I don't have it and the store doesn't have it. Like you could just make it. I love that idea. Well, not only that, but I actually got started dyeing by over dyeing commercial fabric mm. because I was working on this really big bed quilt and I just couldn't find a print that was the right color. So I found a print that had a light background and I over dyed it and it was like perfect. And that just kind of went, oh, okay. And for those who don't know what over dyeing is, will you give them a quick? No, dye? it's just it's just basically dyeing something that already has a, a color or a pattern on it. So if you've got commercial fabric, I mean, we've all got fabric in our stash that we look at, you know, however many years later and go, why, why, why did I ever think I was going to use this? And if it's ha if it's fairly light or if the back side of it is light, oh. you can dye it and then give it new life. Or even like I was thinking, I have this, I bought this fabric uh, online. It's re way brighter orange than I thought it was going to be. And yeah. I was like, oh, I could totally tone it down. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what's so cool about just learning how to dye. Now, one of the things that Lynn and I were talking about before is like dyeing can sound a little intimidating. And I'm somebody who hasn't done a lot of dyeing. And I always get a little nervous about like jumping in. So she <laughs> can give us a pep talk on why the water is safe for us to jump in the dye bath. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, really easy. Um, I think people are afraid they're going to do something wrong and it's, it's really hard to do anything wrong there. The things you need for dyeing is you need the dye and you need something called soda ash and soda ash is what you use, um, to cause the chemical reaction between the dye and the fiber. So the only mistake you can make is to forget to put the soda ash in. Okay. Because then the okay. dyes won't react and the color will wash out. But that's the only thing that you can do that's like wrong. Anything else, you know, you might not get exactly what you want, but yeah. you may get something even better. And do you need um, like giant containers or just no, like. No, 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 no. I mean, I could dye um, a fat quarter in, this is my coffee mug and I wouldn't, but I could dye a fat quarter in something this size. <gasps> so See? I tend to use a lot of. It's great if you eat yogurt or you eat sorbet in those cute little jars. Yeah. So I use lots of just recycled plastic containers. Um, I have some bigger buckets that are maybe two and a half gallons. And then occasionally I'll, I'll use like a five gallon bucket. Okay. Um, but everything is very easily contained in, until you get into really large pieces of fabric. Yeah. Um, yeah. But a lot of it, I'll have my, I have, I have a utility sink and I may have like, you know, five or six or eight little containers of different in colors in the sink just sitting there because it, uh, the fabric needs to sit in the dye for at least two hours. And then do you just rinse it out in the sink or yep. do you, um, okay. So well, I rinse it out in the sink and it depends how much, if I have a lot of fabric I'm dyeing, I'll rinse it out in the sink until I get a lot of the excess dye out and then I can throw it into the washing machine. Okay. There and you it, go. it will not hurt the washing machine. Well, hello. We've got lots of people saying hi, including someone from Montana. Hey, and we had someone from Germany. Oh, great. From all over the world joining us today. That's awesome. Okay, so once you've learned, you've taken on how to, you know, use these dyes, especially if you're a beginner, Lynn has a second class on shibori techniques. Now, shibori, a lot of times people associate with indigo, but Lynn was somebody who taught me, no, you can just use these other dyes. Like the shibori is really about the resist. And so, Tell us a little bit about the kind of things you're going to show in the Shibori class. Well, let me hold a few things up. How's that? I love that. I love, I love and show and tell. And I'll see if I can get them in the screen. So this is an example. I guess the problem is I have to sort of hold it in front of my face. That's great. Yep. Um, so here's an example of something that was done with Shibori. Yeah. Um, here's an example. Oh, yeah. So that's like um, a fold and clamp technique it looked like. This one, this one is actually fold and dip. Oh, and dipped. Yeah. So you're folding your fabric. I love when they all get refolded and, and you're like, that's just, how it was made. And then you just dip the edges in. Um, 
This is well, here's this is one of my favorite ones. Let me see if I can get this in the screen. Ooh. This one was done by stitching. Oh, I love that. Um, here's a little snippet that you can see. This was yeah, done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you bigger. Hold on, I'm gonna hide. Okay. My... I wish I could see me. Okay. This was done using a slinky. <laughs> and you have to take the class to see how to do that. Um, here's another one. This one was done on a rope. Uh, here's one that was done da, 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 on a pole with string. So there's just tons of different different patterns that you can get. Um, these are all sewn into a sampler. So oh, wait here, I'm gonna one more, one last one, or last one. I think you can see that. So there's a ton of different things that you can do, and um, some of the more common techniques that you've probably seen involve wrapping fabric around a PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. The pipes may be about three inches in diameter and you wrap your fabric around and squish it together and you get all sorts of cool patterns. Yeah. And so most of what you need for these classes is, is either stuff you have around the house or, you know, you may need to go to a hardware store and pick up a few things, but it's not, it's not a lot. Yeah. It's not like a lot of expensive stuff. That oh, definitely. Of it's definitely really not cool. expensive stuff. Yeah. I mean, like you can use binder clips. You can use all sorts. Like there's one where you have like, um, I don't want to call them like tongue dis depressors. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. Or craft, <laughs> I think they're called craft sticks. Yeah, yeah. We're going to, yeah, they're craft sticks. That's Craft probably. sticks, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, craft sticks and binder clips, um, clothes pins. Yeah. Um, just clamps you might have around the house, all sorts of things. Yeah. It's kind of fun to walk around the house and figure out what you could use, I think. Well, what I love is when I, when I teach these classes in person, I love to see what people bring with them. Yeah. Because they just bring all sorts of strange things. And I go, oh, I never thought of that. That's very cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so the link to both of those classes is in uh, the chat. And if you go to those pages, there's like a little intro. There's lots more information on those classes. And of course, you can always send me an email too. And that's all on the creativespark.ctpub.com. And you can get a link through um, our main website as well. I'm going to put um, Lynn's website as well up in the Thank chat you. as well. And Lynn has a bunch of cool things happening uh, in 2022. Yay! Like live <laughs> events that I wanted to her to get to share. Um, and the first one I just found, I, it was on our website, so I, I don't know how I passed it over, was tour, was it Tour de France? Is that what it is? Yes, I am. I will be leading a tour to France in September mm -hmm. and it starts in Paris. And the first thing on the agenda is spending two days at the European patchwork meeting. Um, and then we work our way down the eastern side of France and there's chances to see pottery studios and wineries and markets. And then we end up in um, Avignon and in Provence. And okay. so that's like a 13 day tour and all the information is on my website. So I'm very excited about that. So everyone should definitely check that out. If you haven't been to France, that sounds fabulous to get even to if you place. have been to France, but you have no I, I have not been there and I'm really excited. I hear it's really wonderful. It is. I I mean every part of France that I've been to has been amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, it sounds fab. The other um thing is that you're teaching like it looked like three or four classes at Quilters Affair in Sisters, Oregon in July. Yes, oh. it's three classes, it's two two day dying classes. And then a one day uh, mixed media collage class. Yeah. If you've never I mean, been to Sisters. Uh, it's just, it's a fabulous place. And the classes are the week before the big outdoor quilt show. So that, I mean, I saw that. I was like, oh, that it's does. Real, well. Yeah. I always wanted to go there and see that as it's well. A, it's a beautiful place to be. It's just the, the whole, the whole, the whole week is just wonderful. And there's other um, opportunities to learn from um, Lynn, like especially if you're in the Bay Area. I know there were some cool classes close by. We're in the San Francisco area, um, but there's virtual things. And of course, if you can't make any of those things, that's <laughs> why we have classes on Creative Spark. And the cool thing about if you haven't taken a class on Crave Spark is there's discussion rooms in all of these classes. And if you have a question on your dying or you can even send Lynn a picture like this 
is this how it's supposed to look or whatever? And it just, the message just goes right to Lynn and Lynn gets a message and she, she sends you a message back. And so that's, we really, our instructors love interacting with you all. So um, just know that you're not burdening anyone by asking this question. <laughs> Some of my instructors are like, they're not asking enough questions. So, <laughs> uh, so feel free to always um, know that you get to actually have conversations with our amazing instructors. We have a really big international audience today. Hey, that's right. In the UK, I am loving that. They already know about France, probably, but <laughs> well, you maybe, maybe not, you know. France too. I mean, how fun. You all in Europe will be easier trip than for um, those of us in the US. So, um, Awesome. Um, anyone have any questions for Lynn or for or for me, but really Lynn, because I'm always, <laughs> you know, always gonna hold it. um put them in the chat because we're gonna wrap it up in a second. But um again, Lynn has these two great classes. One is the beginning dying and one is the Shibori techniques. And then um her website should be in the chat as well as links to those classes. So feel free to go and check out more of it. So I don't see any other questions, but I wish everyone a great day. And thank you, Lynn, for joining me. We had been talking about this for a while. My pleasure. I'm so glad it happened. And, and we should do it again sooner than later. So, well, okay. Yeah. And Lynn has some other classes we we're talking about planned for this year, later this year. So keep your eye open for that. And we'll join again. We'll have her come on again when those come live. So, great. have a great day, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.